So on this end, you have your acids, and on this end, you have what we call bases. Now, for a trout stream, we want that sea salt to be right in the middle, neutral. So we don't want it too much acid or we don't want too much base. So what we're, what we're looking for and what we want to see today is a neutral solution, something that's got not too much acid and not too much base. And that's what the pH test is going to do. We were doing a trout release with a small elementary school who participates in our Trout Kids program. Um, we encourage students, and so do the Next Generation Science Standards, some new standards that are coming up, to um, be in control of their own knowledge and to make their own decisions. So they have received education about where water is in the world, um, what pollutes our water, what makes a healthy water habitat. It's part of our philosophy behind our education programs because our drinking water comes from Sebago Lake and we believe that everyone should understand how to keep our water clean because everyone benefits from clean water. And um, it, if they're, they're the scientists, we want to place that on them. Um, and so if they are presented with all the data that we as scientists are presented with, they should be able to make that decision on their own. And I mean it when I tell them it's up to them to decide whether or not they release their trout. So it gives them that sense of responsibility, which every student needs to have, really. They went to three stations today. They did a streamside assessment hike to look at the habitat um, all around the stream. So since we're in an urban setting, it's really different here and, and even within... 50 feet um, where there's some houses and some non-point source pollution coming from lawns and from road salt and road sand from the winter those sorts of things and then in the preserve it's much more wooded um, so they can compare those two types of habitats the, the stream is more channelized over there where it's more natural on that side so they can compare those two settings to see what makes a healthy stream for brook trout and what makes healthy water quality they also test for water quality parameters like ph and dissolved oxygen turbidity which is how cloudy the water is temperature um, and then the last station they look at things called macroinvertebrates which are pretty much bugs that live in the water and are a really nice overall indicator of the water quality of a stream because they're living there all the time. Some macroinvertebrates can only live in clean water. So if they're finding those sensitive species, they can tell a lot about the water quality. <laughs> nice. There it goes. Awesome. Cool.